We have three players here today. Mason Walters, who is an offensive lineman that's about 6'6", 325. Uh, we have Carrington Bynum, who was an outstanding defensive back for us last year that made the huge interception in the A&M game for a touchdown to kind of turn the game. And we have Jordan Hicks, who will be one of the leaders for us at, at linebacker. You'll get to visit with them. I did ask the ladies to come in, and if I had any hard questions, I would let them support me. So we'll, we'll just ask them to step up and, and, and answer any questions that we need here. So we're, we're done. Got my back. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> Questions? We've got a question we'll start with on the front right and then we'll move around. <clears throat> Barry Trammell with the Old Home. And, uh, and I asked the uh, uh, cheerleaders if they want to quarterback the Longhorns this year. <laughs> <laughs> they would want the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be without question. There aren't any Longhorn cheerleaders in that But for you, Matt, what is, do you, how confident are you with the uh, Comfortable and confident with David Ash going into the, into the 2012 season. Last year at this time, I sat here, we had four. And there was a lot of concern about trying to get four guys prepared for a new offense. So at the same time, we Garrett Gilbert gets hurt in the second ball game. David Ash steps up as a true freshman. Case McCoy jumps in. Connor Wood transfers. Um, so it was all over the place. What we've done now, we have two older guys that have been through a year with uh, Brian Harson, Major Apple White offense. Uh, they both won significant games, one against uh, Case against a &M in College Station at the end of the year, David Ash in the bowl game against Cal. So we're coming in at a much better place this year than we were last year. They left spring practice even. And talking to the guys last night, they've had a very competitive summer, and both of them are, are in the mix, and we should have a great... Uh, battle at that position in, in preseason. If you sit there and you say, we'd rather have Ben Young, we'd rather have Colt McCoy, there's no question that those are two of the best quarterbacks to ever play college football, so you'd like to have that luxury, but even then, if they get hurt, like Colt did in the national championship game, you're, you're usually inexperienced to, to, in the backup role. Two is more difficult if, if, if the chemistry isn't working well. Right now, David and Case are getting along really well. They're worried more from what I hear about winning than they are playing. Uh, and I feel like that uh, uh, one of those guys will separate himself some in, in preseason, and then uh, it'll give us the other guy to come off the bench and, and play if, if need be. Connor Brewer was there for the spring. We got to watch Connor some. Um, they've said he's had a great summer. And we haven't really seen Jalen Overstreet. We'll get to see him in preseason camp. So... Uh, you wouldn't think the freshman would get in the mix, but there could be an injury. They, they could uh, have come in and, and do something really special for us. Um, but obviously that's, that's a key to us being better is we need to play better at quarterback. And, and I think that means we need to have more explosive plays from that position. And at the same time, we need to protect the ball better. What do you think, ladies? Is that, that, okay. Got a question on the aisle right. Randy Briggs, Austin American Statesman. Matt. What do you need from Jordan Hicks this year? And could you talk about just how he's progressed since he got to Austin? We had a great defense last year by the end of the year, and, and our defense was um, really led by seniors. We lose Keystone Randall up front, who did a great job for us. You lose Emmanuel Acho and Keenan Robinson in the middle, and you lose Blake Gideon from the back end. And you've got to be strong down the middle to, to be great on defense. So the question mark will be, uh, who will be the guy to step up and, and take the leadership role that Keystone had in the front? You, you figure Alex Overford and Jackson Jeff Cope will be right there. Uh, linebacker, the oldest one and the, the most experienced one is Jordan Hicks, and he's played in some big ball games and played very well for us. He needs to stay healthy, and he needs to be the leader in the middle of that defense and kind of captain the defense for us. And, and I think he understands that role, and that's one of the reasons he's here today. Good question. All the way in the back corner, right. Matt, Kevin Flaherty, Fox Sports. Can you talk? Where? Can, we, wait a can you talk a little bit about what Carrington Bynum brings to your defense, and is he flying a little bit under the radar as far as the national scene is going at this point? Yes, uh, Carrington will be one of the best defensive backs that we've had. He's smart. Uh, he's in uh, great condition. He's very confident. He doesn't say a whole lot. And, and that probably has hurt him some on the national scene. Uh, but he played a lot as a freshman for us. He started and had an outstanding year last year for us. 
Uh, he's a guy that can intercept the ball. He can make plays. He's physical. Uh, and I think that he will end up being one of the better defensive backs in the country this year. Got a question on the left. Chuck, put your hand up so you can see what Perry Chuck Carlton, Dallas Morning News. Mac, as you look at your defense, as you look at the running backs, do you need your quarterback to, to give you those Vince Young, Colton Coy performances, or, or have things changed a little bit? What are your expectations? What do you need from your quarterbacks? When we lost Cole at Kansas State the first year when we were in great shape to, to be in the conference championship game, I think we lost him after eight plays to the same injury he had in the national championship game. Cost us a chance to play for the championship that year. The national championship game, the fifth play of the game, same injury, very similar, down on the goal line, uh, puts him out for the ball game. So uh, you go back and look at our BCS games. We haven't run the ball as well as we needed to in those games. I thought Colt was so good and so accurate that we became a softer offensive football team from a running standpoint. We were throwing the ball on third and four. And, and uh, I wanted to bring the toughness back because also in those BCS games, we didn't stop the run very well against Alabama. We didn't stop the run very well against uh, Ohio State. We didn't stop the run very well against USC. So I want us to, to get so we are a more physical football team from top to bottom. And I also don't want to have it where the success of our football team is totally on one person's shoulders uh, for him to have a great day, not a good day, or for him to be healthy. Um, and, and to do that, we've got to get better around the two quarterbacks. So we'd still like to have those plays out of our quarterback like we had with Vince and Colt, but we, we'd like to be in a position where if one of them isn't able to play that day, that, that we can still uh, have the same success as an offensive team. Question on the outside right, and we'll move to the left. Yes, hey, John Hoover, the Tulsa World. You mentioned, uh, you said one of these guys, we think one of these guys will separate himself some. What indications do you have at this point that that will happen between David and, and uh, Case? I've got 37 years that says, John, it'll probably happen one way or the other, and usually the players will choose them for you. If not, you bring in key players and ask what they think. Um, but usually somebody will tweak an ankle or somebody will have a sore shoulder, or, and, and it, it, it may not be just by performance that it separates. And if it doesn't separate, you choose one to start the game. If he doesn't play well, uh, you put the other one in. And I remember one year that Coach Taft at Baylor was running quarterbacks in every play and, and had a really good team. I remember he would run them in every play and put a different one in on the goal line short yardage package. So um, it is what it is, and, and I think what we've got to do is maximize uh, their abilities to run our football team uh, by utilizing both of them at this time. Jim Pritch in the middle, about halfway back. Yes. Tim Griffin with the San Antonio Express News. You mentioned uh, the fact of a need for some increased physicality. I'm curious, you're right with two Juco kids, Hawkins and Moore, what that's going to help out immediately. Bo Davis and Stacy Searles came in from Alabama and Georgia. Bo coaches our defensive line and Stacy coaches our offensive line. Uh, both of them had relationships with these young men and with their, their coaches in junior college. And we feel like right now it is working for both of them. They both had a good semester academically. Uh, from what it sounds, they both had very good summers. And, and both of them will either start or get significant playing time. Question on the outside left. Uh, Blair Kirkhoff with the Kansas City Star. Back, you mentioned the, the, the running game and how you wanted to see a little bit more toughness there. How would, how would you define toughness and how does that you know, how does that contribute to the team's identity? I think toughness on offense is the ability to move the ball either by throwing it or running it, and therefore confidence. And especially, we did not play well in the red zone last year. You better be tough on short yardage and goal line. You better be tough in the red zone. And, and, and you can't just throw it all the time and be successful. The, the knock against the, quote, throwing teams for years has been that uh, uh, the field shrinks as you get closer to that goal line, it's hard to score without being able to run. So uh, that's one element. The other thing is being able to stop the, the our defense, stop the other team's rushing game and making that team one-dimensional. Because it's hard to win if you're one-dimensional. And uh, We always felt like even with Mike Leach's teams, if we took away the screen game and the draw game, uh, we had a chance to win the game. If you allowed him to, to run the ball and throw the screens and you had to, to plant your feet and stop to stop that element of the game, he was going to beat you behind you and beat you deep. So 
uh, trying to be tough enough to make a team one-dimensional. The other thing is we go back to the, the biggest difference in football games is turnover ratio, and you need the big hits. Uh, you need to, to stop the run on first down so you can put pressure on the quarterback, put him in a very difficult position, and strip some balls or force some interceptions. And if you allow people to stay um, along with the chains and, and have normal down and distance, it's really, really hard to force turnovers. Good question about him. How are we doing, girls? We doing okay? Okay. No, I'm really something else, but I'm just saying, Coach, can you tell us a little bit about my day? It's been like, it's been a while since, you know, since coming out of high school, when I recruited. First year was okay, second so year kind of giving us a fun. Let us know what y'all are in progression, getting them going. Yes, Mike had a, an outstanding freshman year until he hurt his knee. And, and we thought he was, he was on target to be one of the great players that we've had at Texas at wide receiver. And, uh, last year, he had a lot of personal things pop up, um, and it just didn't work as well for him. It's harder for receivers when you're playing four quarterbacks. It's harder for them to build a guy. It's hard for them to get chemistry with the guy. That's one thing we're working to find out right now. Um, but Mike had a good spring. He's getting his confidence back. He's blocking better. His relationship is good with Darrell White, our new receiver coach. So we really need Mike to step up and have a great year if we feel like he will. When, when you talk about your players in the summer, the NCAA says, I can only have a casual <coughs> conversation with our players and our coaches about who's working out and who's doing well. And not even who's working out, you can't ask. Uh, so last night, you, you just ask the players, and, and, and they give you casual comments about, yeah, Mike's got his confidence back, he's doing well, and, and those type of things. But uh, we'll know more in, in the next 10 days. Question, Kirk Richmond. But we need our receivers to step up in general. We need the three young receivers, uh, Caleb Jones, Marcus Johnson, and, and Kendall Sanders to play well. And then we've got Marquise jumping in the Olympics on the, on the fourth, and... Um, we, we report the fifth, so hopefully he'll be back with a gold medal in the, in the first part of that week, so maybe he can get more time than he got last year. Okay, yeah, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Station. Uh, Mac, will you have a change in offensive philosophy this year because it goes against the grain in a spread-happy league or because you have great running backs and inexperienced quarterbacks? I think yes. I think what we'll do is, is we'll, we'll try to be balanced. Uh, we'll play to um, our confidence. We'll play to uh, the guys that are performing the best and making the plays. But we felt like the, the biggest thing, we rushed the ball for 441 yards against Texas Tech and Kansas back-to-back -back last year. And then lost, lost both backs the next week with Missouri and lost Fozzie Whitaker. And we were not able to throw the ball well enough to hang in there. John Harris got hurt. Uh, Jackson Shipley got hurt, so we, we were pretty much crippled across the board in a lot of those different areas. And we feel like to win our league, which is what we want to do, we've got to be balanced and we've got to be able to throw it as well as run it. So we do not want to be a running football team. We'd like to be a team that can do both. And we feel like that we've made so much progress in the running game that we can line up and run the ball just about every week. But you're not going to be able to do that continuously against really good defenses unless you can throw it and keep them all balanced. All the way in the back on the left. Chip Brown, orangebloods.com. Mac, um, how much better do you think your defense can be in year two under Manny? I, I don't know. The question mark about our defense will be, can a Steve Edmond replace a Keenan Robinson and and will Jordan take that leadership role of Emmanuel Acho, and will one of those defensive linemen step up? Because I, I thought Keaston Randall had a great year. I thought he was really uh, drafted much lower than, than we thought he should because we thought he was a better player than, than he was drafted, and he's going to make the team and, and stay with them right now. Uh, so uh, what we've got is really good players at those positions. We don't have that senior leadership. We only have two seniors that would start today on defense. And we probably have two seniors that will start on offense. So it'll still be a really young football team. So the leadership's going to have to come with, from within with some of the younger guys. Coach Brown, you broke your record. That's 10 questions you took. That's pretty good. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments. Have a good season. Thank you.